started. Recording started. So this is Mark Waite and Diraj Singh Jota uh, talking on January 17, 2022. We're going to do a pair programming session on parameterized, parameterized trigger plugin. So let's look at the shared screen first, and we'll just start with, with this. So can you see the screen okay? And is it's probably better if I give it more a bigger text. Is that font big enough to read? Yes, it is. Okay, Sounds great. Good. All right. So then what we need is I need to clone the GitHub repository for parameterized trigger trigger. And so parameterized trigger. Okay, so I think that's it. And now what we're going to do is I'm just going to be lazy like this, copy that, gh repo clone that. Okay, and I'm gonna say gh repo fork because I don't, yes, and I'd like to add a remote. Okay. And there we are, good, all right, so. Now, do you already have a pull request pending for something that I should be borrowing from you to, to get most current things? Yes, so for uh, the upstream repo of this uh, plugin, there is one PR that I've opened. Okay, good, so let's look at that. Which one is it? Mm, ah, here update. it is, update parent palm, okay. Yes. Correct. All right, so let's check out that pull request. And it's so the change is you've up, updated the parent palm from 4.31 to 4.33. Okay. Yes. Now I'm surprised there's not already a PR that's doing that. Interesting. Okay. So, huh. Yes, there is the bump plugin from 4.31 to 3.3. Oh, okay, so good, all right. So here's this depend about one. All right, good, okay. Mm. Oh. Okay, and this one has failing checks. Okay, so, so already, would you like to investigate the failing checks on this pull request before we go elsewhere? Or do you want to, what, how, what would you like to approach first? Yes, I think uh, we if we investigate the errors in this PR, that would be great because that's where I'm okay. confused. All right, good. Let's do that then. So, and we can we could do that either from your PR or it looks like from the Dependabot PR because I suspect they're the same change, right? Yes. They are. Okay, okay good. So mm -hmm. I'm going to borrow the Dependabot PR just because it's been there and the machinery mm -hmm. should be working and isn't. Let's find out why not. So console output says, ah, this is the upper bounds dependency checks. Okay, good. So now I should be able to see exactly that. If I do it, if we look at my thing, here is the update parent palm commit on top of the master branch. So I'm going to do a clean, skip tests, verify. And this will take a little bit because it first has to download a big chunk of the internet. Okay, and so okay. I can see the exact failure. Hmm. Okay. That's good. That's what we wanted. Exactly. Now, if we look at, oops. If we look at the palm file, Okay, so when we were looking at it earlier, we said version, and this thing is already using
So I'm going to do the same steps we had done earlier, where we said, I'm going to switch it to use 2.289.x. Right. And when you did or that, it, oh, go ahead. Or was it 2.289.1? Uh, well, so in the bomb, it uses .x. And then in the, the oh, Jenkins, Jenkins version value, hmm. it uses an actual version number, 2.289.1. Okay. So what this is, is this is a property that's passed into uh, or that's used throughout the, the project to decide what version specific release of Jenkins. The bomb is actually an artifact. So it's a plug -in, or a project object model. And, and that artifact is saved with this name. So it's by convention that we know that that reference represents 2.289 just because that's its name. Now I need that version number again. And I'm gonna cheat and go grab it from another place where I know I've got it. So here's the version that I'm using in platform labeler. So let's borrow that. Okay, so let's look at what's changed so far. Yes. So here, here are the things that have changed in the POM so far. Before we even try to compile it, the things I took out is I deleted the reference to subversions version number. May or may not work. I may have to put it back. I deleted promoted builds, may or may not have to put it back. I deleted the, the version for conditional build step and I deleted a waitility. And I updated us to a newer version of the Palm, the, of, the, of the Jenkins version. Oops. Any questions so far? No, nothing. So we deleted the versions because we will be using BOM, which does the work by itself. Right. That's the idea is we're going to mm. lean on someone else who's already doing mm. the heavy lifting, the, the hard work, so that we don't have to do a bunch of com computing. So let's try to sure. compile again. I expect it's going to fail, but let's see. All right. So it fails brutally by saying promoted builds has to have a version number. So if we, whoops. Look at this. Some problems were encountered while processing the palms. It says dependencies that version for promoted builds jar is missing. So mm -hmm. the thing that I did to delete it didn't work. Oh. So I need to switch back and I'm going to borrow my diff tool and make it do the work for me. So this one I have to keep. Yes. Let's go back and look what was the other failure. The other failure was conditional build step and a waitility. So I've got to put both of those process. back as well. Okay. So let's go back and put those back. Whoops. Would help if I didn't kill the buffer I was working on. Okay, so subversion, we think we can delete the version number, but conditional build stuff, we can't. A utility, we can't. And that's promoted it. Build. I'm sorry, add what? Uh, did we do for promoted build as well? We need to add the version for it as well. Uh, let's check. So subversion, we deleted the version number. Yep, so promoted builds, it's back. Okay, great. Good, good reminder, thank you. So let's try it again. Okay, so, nope, it still says, okay, and now I deleted the subversion version number and it still uses 2.15.1. Right. Okay, so that means my let's use the bomb while a good thing isn't going to fix this. Uh, I didn't get you, can you please repeat? 
Yeah, so so the idea we had originally started with was, hey, let's use the plug-in bill of materials. And the plug-in bill of materials didn't solve the problem. Right, right. So, so now the question is, okay, what will solve the problem? And the web page mentioned, hey, if you put a reference to this, the highest numbered version of these of this thing, mm. it should solve it. And notice mm. that it's test scoped. Oh, okay. So I think, well, so I think what we could try is we could just try putting a dependency on it. Now, interesting that there's a Makito so, so looking at this, Diraj, I'm a little surprised. Okay, we've seen a reference to subversion. Okay. That, that I've seen, right? There's, a, there's clearly a dependency. Exactly. But, oops. But I didn't see a reference to Makito. Exactly. There are some uh, things mentioned in this uh, tree which are not there in the palm symbol. Okay, good. All right. Oh, no, there it is. But there's Makito. Oh. Interesting. So okay, so Makito. So what Makito has is it depends on Byte Buddy, and the Byte Buddy uses this. So hmm. one, one technique that we could use, particularly since, okay, this is where, this is where thinking about these things can help me. So... Makito is one of the things involved. Subversion, we've declared a dependency on. Makito as well. Makito, we didn't declare a version number because we're relying on it coming from uh, Jenkins, bomb? either Jenkins plugin bomb or from Jenkins core. So one way or the other, somebody else is giving us that version number. But since it's a test dependency, we could put an exclusion to exclude this thing and see if that helps us because the test will then tell us if it failed because we excluded it. Does, does that make any sense to you questions? So you're excluding, so you found out that uh, JNA platform has different versions and one of them is 5.8.0 and it's a test one. So you want right. to avoid this dependency mismatch. So that's why you're excluding this one from the form XML. Right. That was, that was just me thinking aloud, what experiment should I try? I don't know if it's going to work, but I was thinking Makes I'm sense. going to try an experiment. Let's see if I could just exclude it. And mm -hmm. if that would solve, if that would get rid of the problem, because, because it's a test, oh, because it's a test dependency, Mm -hmm. The tests will either pass or fail when I make that exclusion. If they pass, then it's probably okay. If they fail, all right, the technique didn't work. So what I was going to do is take this exclusion, copy it, whoops, in, in the real palm, not in the fake, not in the, the old copy. Uh, so let's see, that was Makito, right? Yes. So I was going to add another exclusion saying, and now, now I admit this is because it's test. I'm not sure that if this had been production code that we were shipping mm -hmm. that I could do this, but because it's a test thing, I, I don't have to worry about it being in production code. So you're saying the implication of this can be the test might fail or pass, right? Right, exactly. The outcome may be that Hey, I do this. Maven no longer has the warning, but then the tests fail catastrophically. Hmm. And if that's right. the case, then it didn't help. It's just this experiment then failed. Yes. Okay. But if if it turns out that it works, then then the experiment passed, and we can just make it because we're already excluding this thing from Makito core. The Hamcrest, okay. Right, Hamcrest is a, a, a Java unit test. Um, what would you call it? A Java unit test um, for literate 
um, assertions. Okay, oh, so that sense. that worked. Oh. oh, there are some errors. There, there are, and those errors are spot bugs warnings. Oh, okay. So we've we've got more work to do, and this is mm -hmm. this is exactly like you would see on on your experience. It's okay. All I wanted to do was update the parent palm. But the mm -hmm. act of updating the parent palm required some other things in order to allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. right. One of them is this, is this additional exclusion. Okay, that needs, the other is spot bugs has more information with the new parent palm than it did with the old. And it's now telling us, hey, here are these problems you need to fix. Right. That makes sense. So now we'll be working on the, these errors that Spotbug has told us about. Right. Well, actually, and, and I, I described it incorrectly. I should be more, more, more accurate here. I suspect the reason these Spotbugs messages appeared now and weren't visible before is we changed the Jenkins minimum version. So instead of compiling with Jenkins 2.263, we're now or 2.270. We're now using 2.289. Right. Okay. So let's look at the differences again. So we remove the subversion versions call out. It's still the same, but we removed it. We don't have to track it anymore. Yes. We added a new exclusion to the Makito core test package. Now, there might actually be a different way to approach this one. Let's commit this one that we've got now, and then we'll investigate to see if there's a different way to do it. So this one is um, exclude uh, require Jenkins 2.289.1 instead of 2.270. Use the recommended minimum Jenkins version. And now oftentimes when I'm writing a commit message like this, I'll go look at the stats data to see what, um, what the, uh, what the statistics are for actual usage of that plugin at various versions. So parameterized trigger. Okay, here it is. So what this is opening for me is a spreadsheet that shows versions of the plugin installed. So across the top, it's plugin versions. And along the left, it's Jenkins versions. Yes. Now, as I hover over this, I see that 94% of 2.41, 2.41 installs are on 289.1 or newer. So, so for wow. the last three or four releases, mm -hmm. the users of this plugin are already upgrading to 2.289.1 or newer. Therefore, we're not harming them. So 2.24, oh. we're just right. doing, we're just updating the minimum version and they've already updated. Hmm. So they have updated this plugins uh, Jenkins version in their local copy and we are doing the same in the centralized one. That's right. You said it exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yes. the stat site shows that the that over 90% of installations of the last three versions are already running Jenkins 2.289.1 users that are updating the plugin are already running Jenkins 
So if they choose not to update the plugin, they won't update to a new release we deliver anyway. If they if they are updating Jenkins, then they're, it appears they're also already updating this. Hmm. So the diff of this commit consists of all the uh, versions that were deleted for the other ones as well, right? Or just the Jenkins version update? Uh, well, so let's see what it did. So in this commit, it removed the version, it added that exclusion and updated this and this. Would you like a better oh. description? Oh, yeah, because we are doing lots of other things as well. But that's well, okay. and what we're doing is the other things we're doing are we're doing because we have to do them in order to make that change. But let's describe yes. those. So okay, so it is exclude. Hamcrest, no, exclude GNA. Right, exactly. From Makito Core. Yes. Test dependency to resolve an upper bounds dependency issue okay what else would we want to say about this i think that's it is there more that you would like said in the commit message um, we also updated bomb version but do we need to mention that or just leave it good the good thing let's do that so Upgrades the plugin bomb version to the most recent release for Jenkins 2.289.x. Good. Yes, looks great. Okay. So now we probably better run tests because all we did was check that it compiled successfully. Let's see about running mm -hmm. tests. Just a minute. We have a computer that has multiple cores. Let's not waste those multiple cores. D fork count equal to one. One C, one and a capital C. One C. What that is, is that says, give me one Java virtual machine per core on this computer. So it's basically use every core on the computer to run tests in parallel. Wow. So since a uh, Basil Pro, I think, uh, suggested idea to automate this whole process into and wrap it into a software tool, which helps us to improve each and every plugin and make sure that they follow same standard in the whole ecosystem, right? So right. I was wondering, like, if I want to automate this exact process, like if I or uh, it's easier to update the version of the parent form but it's difficult to solve the issues that come after we update it. So I was wondering how should we automatically resolve everything that we are doing right now? And, and I truly do not know that, that I think you asked the exact question that I ask about, as I look at each of the steps on contributing to open source, each of the steps in that document, I thought, okay, which of these could I confidently automate and for instance, I could see automating update parent POM, but only submit the pull request if a local build succeeds. Right. Because 
it's pointless to update the parent POM only to give them a failing build. But if the build fails, then I've got to do a lot of investigation to understand why did it fail and what else do I need to propose? Exactly. So that is a problem. Like, you cannot make it fully automated. Well, and, and I'm, I'm sure that Basel, Basel's expert at software development, he's probably got a way to make it automated and could guide that. I just don't know. I don't know the technique. Okay, that's great. So should, should I ask him about this? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So is he on our channels, Gita channels? Uh, don't know. Uh, so you could, you should be able to reply to the email list where he, he made the suggestion saying, hey, I'm interested in this. And uh, I'd like to have a further conversation about it. Okay. Yes. So it and was I don't on... remember if that was, it was on community.jenkins.io, exactly. wasn't it? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So what you can do is highlight the block that you've got a question about, press the reply button, and it will actually quote that and give you the reply. And, and you can then provide a reply. Okay. So our build, sure. our tests passed but there are uh, spot bugs issues. So we've got to fix those. So the, the job is not yet complete. So let's, let's fix those. Okay. So we've got an unused public or protected field in, well, here, let's get those up in a, Okay, so here they are. It says unused public or protected field. So let's look at this. Public Boolean, build all nodes with label. Unused, really? Why would it be unused? Why would you have a field that's unused? Truly, it is unused. <laughs> so it shouldn't be there at all, right? Should what? It should not be there at all, right? Yeah, except that, now this is where it gets complicated. Public fields are part of the published API. And therefore, once a Jenkins, once a Jenkins plugin has published a release with that public field, it will break other people if we delete it. Oh. So, so the, it, but it, it absolutely is correct that at least in this class, it's not using build all nodes with label. And it searched, we searched, let's double check our search. Because I'm just astonished. Why have it if it's unused? There we go. Okay, so it is used in some tests. This one sets a value false. So this tag also, maps to that field, right? That's correct. So, I mean, if we delete it, I think the tests that use those config XML files will break. Yes. So our choices are we could suppress the warning because it's part of the published API and the way we, or we could, what else? Try, we could do all sorts of heroic code things in order to, to be able to delete it safely. For me, I think it's simplest just to suppress the warning. So we're doing this because Spotbug is not happy with this one. Build Correct. Okay. Yeah, so if we look at the build output, 
what does it say? It says there's an unused public or protected field. And we've looked at it and we agree it is unused. It's not being referenced in any way. But if we delete it, we risk breaking compatibility hmm. for existing users and for um, tests. Right, tests and other plugins that might be using this plugin's API. Hmm. Right. So my thought was we should suppress the warning. And the way we suppress a warning is if we're lucky, we do this at suppress FB warnings. And now I have to go find something to copy. This is what we're suppressing. Field is unused, but would change the public API if we deleted it. Now, now we've got to go, got to go find the the actual. What do we import to get this suppress FB warning, uh, etc. So, what what you're experiencing now is how do I handle spot bugs warnings that appear hmm. right questions so far yes so it, this um this variable uuf yeah, news public or predicted field so is this like an id for this or it's like a generic thing it is it is exactly an id for it's an identifier for that mm -hmm. class of error so if i copied this and bring up a web browser to go looking for uh, not that one let's bring up another web browser here we go spot bugs and i look for that here's the bug description it says this field is never used the field is public or protected so perhaps it is intended to be used with classes not seen as part of the analysis. If not, consider removing it. Oh, so they're like, oh, I, I get it now. Makes sense. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So based on some in, uh, any kind of problem that we be having in, in, in our code, spot bug will map to these different IDs and will be showing in the output. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So. Spot bugs will tell us, hey, it has told us there's an unused public field. And right. it's correct. There is. And this okay. is the its identifier for the message it gave us. Hmm. And now the question is, what do we do with it? And I think our choice would be, let's suppress it. In order to suppress it, I need to find out how to import uh, this, the right thing for suppress FB warning. So just a minute, let's bring back our web browser again. And we're going to search for spot bugs import. What to import to use suppress FB warnings. And it says, it's not helping me. I need the import statement in Java. didn't help me at all. Okay, so we're going to look at some source code then because I happen to know where I can find an example of a suppression like this. Here it is. So all I did is go grab from somebody someplace else what the Java import statement is. And your IDE will probably show you this without you having to do all these things that I'm doing. All right, that's great. It's just, in my case, I'm not running the IDE because I'm using a remote terminal. Yes. 
your favorite one, Emacs. It's exactly that's. I am using that editor. Okay, so I'm going to try to compile again. Let's see if I was able to silence that one spot bugs warning. Yes. And that did not do it. So it may be that I've got a wrong syntax. Let's go back to that place where we had the examples. And maybe positive as value is equal to then the ID. Yeah, exactly. I think you're right. I think we need to use the full syntax. Let's at least try it. Yeah, because it's a string. So it's yes. amazing that it didn't fail to compile. <laughs> So we say value equals this justification equals part of the public API. So what will this field do, the justification one? That's used as a way for the, the person who is suppressing this warning to communicate mm -hmm. to the next reader okay. why they're, they're suppressing it. Right. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Okay, let's try compiling again. Oh, it would help if I use the correct symbol, wouldn't it? It's plural. And there will still be other find bugs warnings, but this should get rid of one of them. Exactly. And yes, it did. Gone. The next one is batch condition. So let's look for it. Oh, now that's a fun one. It's a private field but again notice this thing right here this read resolve deleting even a private field can break compatibility mm, okay so i would tend to suppress this one as well So let's go borrow our um, we might need to change the idea as well. Oh, oh, you're right. You are correct. Thank you for catching that. Because it's not an unused protected or private field, is it? Yes. It's just, I think, you, you have unused, if I'm not wrong. Unused field. Okay. Right. Very good. Nice catch. Okay. Oops. And let's... And did we import it as well in this file? Did. It's right up here at the top. I just did that. Yes. Okay. So let's try compiling again.
Okay. Nine. We're down to two. Yes. This one is high level, uh, it says. And this one will be a fun one because... <laughs> Plugin Hudson plugins parameterized trigon plugin shadows the simple name of the superclass, and what that means is we've got a class, this long name that inherits from this short name, and you oh. can predict that that makes it very difficult to decide when I use. Short form like this plugin, what do I mean? Mm, exactly. But if we change the class name, we've now changed the published API and broken things. <laughs> right. So we can't do that. So now we have to. And I think all we can do is go suppress this message because we aren't allowed to, as far as I can tell, aren't allowed to change that class name. Otherwise, we'll break okay. it. Exactly. All right. So let's go do that. There it is. Public class plugin extends Hudson.plugin. That is terrifying. <laughs> oh, the places where things can go wrong with that choice. Okay, it's unambiguous in every use. There is no case where it's using the word plugin unqualified. So it actually is safe to suppress this one. It's just scary that such a thing exists. Right. So uh, can you also show me how is it unambiguous? How are we qualifying it in the right way? So I would expect to find the word plugin somewhere without mm -hmm. a qualifying package name that leads it. And so what I did was I looked for the mm -hmm. word plugin. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's plugin in the pink. And there's a a fully qualified reference to Hudson dot plugin. Mm -hmm. And here's the only other reference to plugin, and it's fully qualified. Right, Hudson dot plugin. Right, exactly. So mm -hmm. as far as I can tell, Looking at this, it looks like it's being unambiguous. It's okay. So even though the exactly, even though the naming is a little similar, but the usage was done in the right way. That's what I think, anyway. Sure. Uh, is it value? Or oh, yes, it is. Thank you. Good for you for having a better memory. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then it's justification. Yes. Okay, now import. Yeah, we need the text for the import statement. Okay. Let's try it again. Yes.
Okay, only one spot bugs warning left. So we go looking for batch condition. And it's also in So if we go here, so comfortable so far? So that that seems to have worked. So what are our changes? Mm. Oops, go ahead. Did you have a question? No, I was just observing that we don't have any error. So um Yes, so we don't have any other error for anything else, right? Correct. Them at one. Okay, that's great. So we have, we have, with those four suppressions that we just did, we have silenced all the spot bugs warnings. Now, we didn't fix them. We just mm -hmm. said, we've thought about this and we don't see any problem with how, what, what's being done. So let's look at the changes. Change number one. Suppress it. Change number two. Suppression, suppress it. Change number three, Sup import suppression. Change number four, import suppression. Okay, so far? Yes. Okay, so then let's put these into a commit message. All right, so suppress spot bugs warnings. Analyze the warnings, non-issues, not an issue. Suppress the warnings. Okay, so what have we done? We have required Jenkins 2.289.1 and suppressed spot bugs warnings to allow it to pass. Mm. Yes. Exactly. Now, one of the things we did not discuss is Makito Core. Let me look and see if I remember correctly. Oh no! Okay, good. This Makito core is the is the primary is the main artifact for Makito, so it's okay. Good. All right. There's another one called Makito dash all that has many more dependencies in it, and and that is not what we need. Okay. So we excluded JN platform from Makito core. So there might be some tests that uh, you're saying that it might or it may fail, like right? it might or it might not fail. So I was wondering that since we have removed a dependency, it should fail, right? No, I, well, if, if that dependency, if it attempted to use that dependency, yes, that would fail. But I, as far as I can tell, it didn't actually attempt to use it. Because if it if it were using it, I would expect 
let's let's run the tests again just to be see just to be sure hmm. but if it if it doesn't use it then why is it in the form file as a dependency oh it's it's that it does it may it may use it in a path that we don't execute okay No test failures yet. That's a good sign. Yes. And the computer's got five of its cores busy at once. So that's good. So it must be 9.20 p.m. for you, right, in Colorado? It is. I'm almost done. With, I, actually, you have a working day. You should be at work at the office today, right? I mean, I'm disrupting you from your work. No, no, not at all. It's pretty flex flexible that way. <laughs> but it, it's, I should be the one who's apologizing because it's your time to sleep. It's after office hours for you. Oh, yeah, I'll. I'll definitely go to bed and get some sleep. Absolutely. <laughs> and I also want to talk to you after the meeting. I think today would not be a good idea because it's too late or maybe next week uh, regarding cloud based discussion. Yeah, let's let's have that. So, um, I think I think we're actually almost done here. I'm going to go ahead oh. and let's let this finish. I'm going to turn off the recording, and while we're mm -hmm. waiting, we can just we can have our conversation. Right.